nobody calls Han Solo a bitch. Bring him on. I prefer a straight fight to all this sneaking around. I don't know where you get your delusions, laser brain. Oh, come on, bro. It's the wars. All right, well, the Obi-Wan Kenobi train is rolling, and they're just shoveling the coal in. This is the Wars and More. I'm Joe. Of course, with us my good buddy Doug. Hey, Doug, how you doing this week? Doing real good, Joe. How you doing? Doing really good. Did you watch that episode? <laughs> uh, of course I did. I mean, wow. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, primarily this week, we're just checking in to talk about Kenobi. Right. Probably going to be short and sweet. We'll see. I mean, it ain't going to be that short. This is a pretty <laughs> fantastic episode. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, but all great. other stuff, kind of going to put that off. We'll get to it. And uh, while we're at it, going to talk about we're not going to be uh, doing an episode next week. So at the time of the finale, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and take a break. <laughs> Yes, but I think because Doug gonna... decided he wants to go camping. Oh well, you know, we all need to get a little R and R every now and then, right? Oh, I I agree. I'm just I'm just busting you up a little bit. <laughs> you told me that I was like, really finale week, dude. I know, I know. <laughs> but hey, hey, it's all right. We'll have time to just really absorb this thing, and we'll come back. We'll do a season recap. We'll look at the finale. It'll be it'll be fantastic. Yeah. This stuff's not time sensitive. Let's go. Like, exactly. Exactly. All right. Now, before we head into uh, one more thing, before we head into uh, talking about uh, part five here, there's this article. It's uh, it's with uh, who is this with? EW, of course. Why isn't? It? Why wouldn't it be? Right. So they're talking with Joby Harold. And I'll just I'll just go over the gist of it. The gist of it is, by the time this is all concluded, all those disc- discrepancies, and I'm you know doing the quote finger thing, right? Everything will be in place. Everything will have an explanation. It'll all make sense. Cool. I must say, I'm 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 happy to hear this. Uh, you know, this article references specific concerns that i've had since the beginning of this series so i'm glad to hear this it's going to be interesting for me to you know see how they how they do it because it's going to be i don't know it's got to be something big i think so right it's funny because they mentioned the one the darth vader lines right yes and i'm like you know, literally, those don't bother me. Exactly. That one's really open-ended. Yeah, we broke those down before the series even came out, and we're like, yeah, we're good with whatever they do. Like, yeah. Hell, they can meet five times throughout this series. and Whatever the last time was. It's whatever since, the last time was. Since then, yeah. <laughs> yep. The feeling I haven't felt since uh, Jabim, or wait, uh, Dayu, no, whatever, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Mapuzo? Is yeah, that the one? It, right, yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, you know, the, the you know, when I left you, I was but the learner, now I am the master. Right. We broke that down, right? When I left you. Right. Meaning, that still means episode three, right? That's when he left him. Didn't say, oh, the last time we saw each other. Well, here's here's the thing about that line. I mean, the, there's a different way to take that, right? It's not literally walking away, I guess, but maybe, you know, when I left you, when I left the Jedi Order. I take it as when I left you, that was the moment he kneeled before Palpatine. Yeah, well, yeah, same same thing, basically. I mean, yeah. you know, I left the Jedi Order, I left you, you know. that Yeah, when he was bestowed with the mantle Darth Vader. Yeah. That's the moment. Right. That's when he left him. <laughs> you know, Darth is the master of the of the Sith, right? Like, that's... Yeah. I was going to say, that's because <laughs> clearly evident from this episode, there is no uh, but the learner in, in Vader. 
<laughs> no. This episode shows, oh yeah, he's got some skills with the force. Oh, I, one thing, if you got to give one credit to Disney Star Wars, right? Yep. It is Darth Vader has been an absolute badass. Yes. In the entirety of Disney's ownership of Star Wars. Which he should be. He should be. He should be. You know, this is all stuff like when we watch and we'll talk about the things that happened in this episode in a few minutes, but everything we've seen so far in the Disney era with Rogue One and things, like that, this is stuff that if George Lucas could have done it, yeah, he would have done it. Absolutely, these were not things that were available at the time. Right. You would not be able to do some of this stuff and make it look good. Exactly, it would look terrible. And George wanted it to look, you know, at least somewhat believable. Yeah, absolutely. He he always pushed the limits of what was available. Yeah. So if if he could have done some of this stuff, he would have. Yep. And yeah, this is that menace that he put into this character's look is now being expressed. You know, with the technology we have nowadays, it's being expressed on screen. Right. That menace is there now. So yeah. It, Disney has definitely handled Vader in a very, very, very good way. Absolutely. So you can take all the complaints, right? Like, oh, they did this (laughs) wrong. You cannot say they handled Vader wrong. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) For one second. (laughs) And even when he's like, you know, defeated, it's not a, like he's shaking his fist. Like I'll get you next time. You almost feel like he's like, all right. Yeah, I'll let you have this one. Right. I mean, I, I mean, know. the only moment where I'm really like, really, that was the whole fire thing on uh, Mapuzo. Right. That one, I was a little like, eh. mm. like you just walk around, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was that was that was a little uh, okay, but you know. But at the same time, I understand it's a story, right? And you want it to continue. You can't, but you, at the same time, you want to show just how powerful this guy is. Right. So I, I get it. I get it. And, you know, the more I've thought about it and things like that, Vader might be thinking bigger picture here. Okay. He's got help right now. Maybe if I let him go, it leads me to this help, and I, I I make a bigger impact, and I still get my quarry. True. He's so a little long game out of it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, he <laughs> he uh, I think he thought he had him till he tore the ship apart. You know. Oh oh. <laughs> going into that already well you know, i mean we kind of were <laughs> were we yeah i was still talking about Mapu- mapuzo oh, okay well i mean because it's okay basically you had that twice you know there and here you know mapuzo yes letting him go i guess yeah all right so we're going right for the sweetest moment <laughs> the sweetest moment <laughs> I mean, dude, uh, really, tell so me, there was tell a, me. There was a lot in this, though, man. I mean, there's a lot of stuff we wanted to see that we actually got some of. All right. So tell me, tell me, you did not, like, shout at your TV, like, hell yeah, <laughs> when that ship goes to take off and Vader's like, nope. Right. <laughs> yes. And he's, like, pulling it back down. I'm like, this is what we've been waiting for. Exactly. Like, this is Vader power, dude. Totally. I was absolutely like jumping up and down <laughs> excited <laughs> when I saw that. And then like he gets it down and I was like, it was already cool. Right. And then he just starts ripping the sides off of it. Yeah. I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other one took off in the background. I was like, Ooh, that was smart. I, I have a feeling that was, a little bit of Kenobi, you know. It was a lot of bit of Kenobi playing against his, uh, 
impatience we'll call it you know yeah impatience he's he's on the attack he's he's right. not expecting the unexpected exactly because he just has victory in sight and he he's gun ho at that yep so a little trickery is going to get him right cuz he's just all brute force right which yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes this is definitely a Vader we've been wanting to see for a long time. You are correct when you say this is the one place that Disney has knocked it out of the park is with Vader. Absolutely. And, you know, I feel like they really saw how Anakin was being established. It was attack, brute force. Let's get it done. Let's win. Right. So a little bit of uh, guile, that's the way around it, right? Misdirection, trickery. Yeah. That's how you're going to get him because he's a brute force kind of guy. Right. Now, if you miscalculate and end up on the receiving end of that force, you're dead. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's over. Yes. And just the raw power that we've seen out of out of Vader. They're just expanding the the, the menace of this villain, and I, I love it. Absolutely love it. Absolutely. It's 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 what we wanted to see for so long. That's the thing that you know, the that I don't know. That I I, I love about this show. Uh you know, there's there's things about about Kenobi himself that I'm not disappointed in, but they're just different than what I thought they would be. You know what I mean? So, uh, that's that's a interesting change. But Vader is definitely kind of what we thought we would see. You know? Yeah, yeah. That, man, they they have just nailed Vader. Yeah. And yeah, I can't I can't be happier about that. <laughs> and they are they are getting a middle ground Vader here. Middle ground. Right? Like uh Oh, oh. And you're getting some Anakin Skywalker through it. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, like it's it's really good. And and I got to say, you know, and this is god, this happens with canon so often. Uh but it makes, you know, the things that Vader says in, like, Return of the Jedi mean that much more, you know? The the stuff about, you know, he's no longer Anakin Skywalker kind of thing. Yeah. You know, it's like, by that point... Oh, dude, you just reminded me of something. Yeah, what's that? Okay, there was a... We talked about this a little off. I, I told you there was a moment that I wanted to talk about, but I couldn't remember what it was. Okay. And now I remember because you said that. Glad I could help. But I got to take a second here. I got headphones dying on me. Ah, uh, I see. That's what Te I get for running wireless. Technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. It happens, right? That's right. All right. We're plugged in. We're good to go. <laughs> That's what I get for wireless, right? Yeah, hey, you know. All right. So one moment that really kind of irked me in the beginning of this series, like literally, I think the first episode. Okay. Was it the first episode or second? When Reva name dropped Anakin Skywalker. Right. Right. That bothered me a little bit. Me too. Because here I am, I'm reading Th Thrawn. You know, I'm Tarkin acts like he knows but doesn't know, right? Yeah, exactly. Like he's figured it out right. by putting the pieces together, but he doesn't say it. And Reva just name drops. Anakin's right. still alive. It's like, what? Yeah. And then we get a reason why she knows. Finally, yes. 
finally. And it made sense. I, I like it. Yeah. I mean, I think I it's think... another she put the pieces together. But given where her character is, name dropping is acceptable to her because she has no love. Right. For Anakin Skywalker. Well, I mean, I mean, Darth I don't know that she had to put much together. I mean, if she was there playing dead, she probably heard him kneel before the hologram of, of Sidious. He calls him Lord Vader. And oh, you think it goes that deep? Like It's possible. I mean, I mean, I guess it's possible. You know. Maybe heard a clone refer to him as Lord Vader. Anything like that, yeah. I mean, she was... I think... I think we clearly know now that, uh, you know, <laughs> early on thinking that, you know, Leia didn't catch that Ben was Obi-Wan because uh, she was out of earshot, it did, didn't play that way. You know what I mean? Right. So I'm thinking Reva clearly knew uh, Anakin was Vader by the end of that night of order 66. Right. And then she just carried that with her the whole time. But then, then think about the long game that Vader was playing on her using all of her rage. Right. I mean, he knows how to manipulate that to his advantage, you know? Right. You know, she, he, he makes her a weapon of, of his, this was just a fabulous episode <laughs> and, right. and like we just like said the hell with the beginning we're just gonna go right for it <laughs> right <laughs> because i mean there was there was a lot in this and you know we we mused in the beginning like in the lead up to this right about how good hayden looks how good ewan looks oh yeah how, yeah how they are like in this perfect middle where they can play an older and a younger version of themselves. Right. And then we see Padawan Anakin Skywalker. Yes. I mean, he's got the Padawan braid. Sure. We got mullet Obi-Wan. Oh yeah. I mean, whoa. Yes. <laughs> now to be fair, it's clear that it's current day Ewan and Hayden, right? Yeah. But that's okay. I'm okay with that. I mean, this was a, a storytelling element that, that works because yeah, it's, I, I, it's both Vader and Obi-Wan's recollections back to like understanding each other and how, how each other is going to play this whole encounter out, you know? And as you watch this, it looks like they used a little bit of that de-aging technology. A little bit. They kept it to a minimum. I, maybe. I'm not sure. I'm thinking maybe it was good makeup. because Oh, it could be just good makeup. Cause, yeah. yeah. I mean, either way, whatever they did, they kept it at a minimum. Right. And I appreciate that. Because it does remind us that we can just suspend disbelief a little bit. Absolutely. You know, if, if what you're seeing is adequate, you don't need to go all that, uh, you know, all in on it. Like, yeah. you can, you can still use these guys and do this scene and everybody's going to be like, wow, that was great. Exactly. <laughs> you know? I, I, I loved seeing that. I, I loved seeing how aggressive Anakin was. In mm -hmm. this sparring match with Obi Wan, and and how they even brought it full circle, and how you know Obi Wan shows him, look, look, you know, until you realize that it's not all about winning, you know, you'll always be a Padawan. So it it, it was cool. I, I it shows how Anakin's always kind of like. Looking for the the quicker, easier, faster route, right? I mean, you know, yeah, you know, to some all degree. the same things that 
Yoda's steering Luke away from, right? Yes, absolutely. No, I, I, that was something we were hoping for. Yeah, I, I, I will say this. I don't think we got to see them in a flashback on quite as grand of a scale that everyone was hoping for. Okay, they're they're in this. Uh, uh, what would you call it? A, <laughs> a, a sparring, sparring room, like, room. Like... yeah, something like that. Okay, this is clearly, I would say, clearly a set from the volume, right? Just the two of them. You know, there's no, you know, gigantic uh, droid army they're fighting, and you know, Ahsoka coming in, and all that kind of stuff. You know, everyone's hoping to see There's still another episode. Clone Wars flashbacks. Yeah, but I, I gotta they got a lot of wrapping up to do. Yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> so uh I, you know, it's not the flashback everyone was hoping to see, but I think it's enough to give everyone a taste of what they wanted. You know? Everyone wanted to see Anakin and Obi Wan again as the brothers they were, you know, from episode three and two. I feel like that delivered. <laughs> it did. And, and you know, I'm really happy that Star Wars has executed a flashback in a very successful way. Because yeah. it's not something that's really a Star Wars thing. Right. And we've seen other flashbacks and they're, they're okay. Um, but they've steered away from stuff you really feel like you know. So the flashbacks yeah. we've seen have been stuff that like are not even in the um not even in our current understanding of Star Wars. Right. You see a flashback Luke, right? Training apprentices. Like this is you know, Luke, you know, I, I shouldn't say training apprentices trying to kill his nephew, but <laughs> right. But you see a flashback of that, and this is at a time where Luke's training apprentices. This is not something we're familiar with seeing on screen. Right. So they're utilizing our our lack of knowledge of that era. You know, you've seen flashbacks with Din Djarin of him as a child. Yeah. This is not something that's in our, you know, familiar repertoire, right? right. Like, it's, True. it's just not there. True, yeah. So what you're getting at is we're not, what we've seen as far as flashbacks go are not things that we're revisiting something that we're familiar with. Correct. It's right. So even even the Book of Boba Fett flashbacks, it's funny because I always looked at those flashbacks as just a little bit less in the future. <laughs> because my reference point there, you know, for a lot of it was Return of the Jedi, you know, where right. Boba Fett went in the Sarlacc pit. So, you know, all of that happened after Return of the Jedi, but... Uh, some was like his personal flashbacks, you know. So, but it was all in the future from what I had known, you know. So exactly, it, it it's not like they're taking something that's familiar, right? They're taking something that is outside of what we've seen. So, being post Return of the Jedi, I mean, that whole gap from Return of the Jedi to um, episode seven. I mean, in what's considered canon now, it's relatively untouched, right? You know, like so. Doing a flashback in that, you're not familiar. Exactly. exactly. You don't know. You ain't seen this yet, right? You may have read some stuff written by someone, God knows when, but you're not visually familiar. Whereas. They're taking a flashback right now to two characters that we've seen on screen. Yes. In this time period. Yes. And making it work. Yeah, totally. I I have to say it was done well. I was pleased when it happened. I I, I the opening of this show, this episode. I'm like, man, that looks like Coruscant. That can't be Coruscant. Oh, that's Coruscant. That's <laughs> that's Coruscant. Yep. <laughs> Holy shit, that's Anakin. Exactly. <laughs> He's got the paddle. What the? Yep. What's going on? Exactly. 
And then Ewan walks in and you're like, holy crap. Yes. Like, first off, kudos, dude. Right? <laughs> so even even judging a little bit from like... Uh, like dude, you look like you did 20 years ago. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Like like Ewan's hair, right? Like the, the mullet haircut actually seems just a little bit shorter than like episode two. So... I'm getting the feeling that this was just a little bit prior to that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's, that's just the feeling I got. I mean, just from, you know, quick references like that, but it, it makes sense because, you know, I would say Anakin does a lot of, (laughs) uh, it's still Anakin from the, I don't know. Just jumping in, right? Just jump in. The, I'm thinking of, of of you know the assassination attempts on on Padme and the speeder chase and all that kind of stuff in episode two. You know, he just jumps in head first, and whatever happens happens. We're gonna go get this guy, kind of thing. You know, that's that's and that's kind of how he was acting with this sparring match. You know, we're going right. to, you know. And now, you know, we've seen another thing visually on screen. Like, we've we've seen the Clone Wars, and, and, and that built on things a lot. But it was not, the Clone Wars happened post um, episode two. Right. And this was obviously pre-episode two. Right. So, this adds to, you know, when, when Anakin's like, I say patience. Yes. patience yes you know like he's 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 just trying to say what his master wants to hear you know <laughs> it's funny it's funny you bring that up because it's, that a, was, it's another moment it's like oh yeah patience from you yeah it's a big big thing with this episode and and obi-wan knows you know, you know patience is not what he's all about you know that's so i love seeing them build on that like that is like, good. Just little moments that like this just brings into clarity. And like I said, Anakin, we've we've gotten tons that that build on that. But adding this to it in live action and and it's like, yeah, patience. You're funny. Right. You say patience. That's that's cool. So I gotta say, just one little thing too from that sparring match. If you watch it closely, there is a moment where Anakin is just whacking on Obi-Wan's lightsaber, which is almost identical to Luke whacking on Vader's lightsaber in mm-hmm. the Jedi. And I was like, yes. That's <laughs> you know, the the styles, the the father son oh, connection there. It's like, wow. Yeah. It- the, these are those moments where you're like, yeah, they, they, they know what they're doing. Yes, exactly. And, and we got to embrace this stuff. Like you have to, like, this is fabulous. Like this is all the stuff. Like I, like, like I mentioned before, if George could have done some of the stuff that's happening here. Oh God. Yeah. It would have happened. Yep. And that's what I love about this. This is all stuff that George was like, yeah, I couldn't do it then. This is special edition crap. Like, <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. You know, and I know how much hate that gets, but like, seriously, calm down. Yeah. I, it's good stuff for sure. Uh, gotta say, I was kind of hoping that we would see more of Tala. Yeah. I, I was liking the idea that there was actually some, uh, I don't want to say Rebel Alliance, but resistance inside the ranks of the Empire, you know? Yeah, but like, like I, I think of um, Callus, right? Yep. Callus was one of those that you ended up seeing eventually some resistance from within the empire right and there was a lot of build to that but this character just shows up we we got no backstory 
things like that. It's just another character that is defecting. Yeah. And it was refreshing. Like, like, look, there are people that are going to defect from this evil regime, right? Absolutely. Yes. And we don't need to see the defection, right? It well, is... I don't know. Sometimes you don't always need to see it. No. But. Well, that's my thing, right? Like, that's where I'm going with this. Is It's refreshing that they don't have to flesh out everything so much that it makes Right. And and we're going to talk about that again when we start talking redemption arcs. All right? Like. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. There are there are ways you can make this stuff nauseating, and I think like doing the callous type arc over and over again is like, because they did it again with um, uh, shit, uh, the guy in the first order, Hux. Oh yeah, yeah. They did it again with Hux, and like if they kept doing that, it gets nauseating. Yeah, you know what? Not every villain needs a redemption arc. So I will say, I think. Okay. <laughs> Only because they had no time to flesh that story out in The Rise of Skywalker. I think Hux, his story could have been a better story if we got a little more of it. You know, like he didn't really care about the resistance. He didn't really care. He just wanted his spot. And he thought Kylo Ren was in the way of that. You know what I mean? And I think he was thinking he was going to use the resistance to his advantage to get what was his. But, you know, here, it's, it's a yeah, little I something mean, with different the here. execution there, like, it just all seemed petulant, right? Like, exactly. That's exactly right, yes. You know, it, it just seemed like, ah, uh, I'm not getting my way, so I'm just going to, I'm just going to do what I can to screw this guy over. Right. Because, because his claim is that Kylo Ren's petulant, right? Like, really? So yeah. you're gonna counter petulance with petulance, like, right? Exactly. Yeah, I I thought the Hux thing was absolutely just nauseating. <laughs> it wasn't good, right? You know, it 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 wasn't like he saw. I, I, I guess if they would have fleshed out their like fleshed out their relationship a little bit more, it would have made more sense. But like they were just at each other's throats from the get go. Right. There was no like why did this become so toxic between them or anything like that? It was just like it started this way and it just stayed that way. And it right. was like that was weak. Yeah. But it seemed like a like we had to fill some time <laughs> in in a movie that we have no time to tell the stories we wanted to like come on right it was just a and, and okay i guess that's where i'll i'll go with that is it felt like a time killer when you didn't need a time killer because you're not explaining any of the other stuff you're doing well what it felt to me like was a convenient way to get our our heroes released from custody you know what i mean uh, it's what it felt like to me. I mean, and almost like an afterthought, like, Oh, we've been making them too powerful. Right. Like they're, they're too good. Right. So we gotta, we gotta clean that up a little bit. Oh, hucks. <laughs> like, Oh yeah. It makes perfect sense. I just watched him do a Nazi speech before he blew up an entire system, but right. Hey, yeah, you're right. He totally would have a, half-ass redemption arc <laughs> exactly now on the other hand what we had here yes this was much uh much better no i, I well not no um but yes i i agree it's it's another one of those we expected some type of redemption arc, even though I was totally against it. Like, we don't need another redemption, right? Right. Like, not every villain needs to become good in the end. It, it, what's the point of villains? <laughs> exactly. You know, 
we need bad characters and and she's doing a good job of being a bad character and now i'm like oh she's the even better bad character because yeah. it's a bad character but with purpose that feels relatable well she's a perfect example of of why you know you want to take lessons away from star wars right this is why you don't let things eat you up inside for so long, right? <laughs> well, there's that. Yeah. But at the same time, like I said, it's relatable too because how would you feel? Yeah, exactly. So it was like, it's not a redemption arc. No. Well, she she says it to Obi-Wan, right? You know, uh, Anakin killed her family basically the jedi were her family and then she says where were you you know and obi-wan knows you know he, he we all know most... where he was and 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 how he must have felt about not being able to be there you know yeah i think the most powerful moment for me though and and her best delivery was when he said we want the same thing right she says, really, Obi-Wan? Do you want Anakin dead? Right. And he's he speechless, right? He's like, I, I, no. Right. Like, I don't think I don't think Obi-Wan's in a position where he feels like he can reach Anakin, but at the same time, he still doesn't want to kill him. It's still that same Obi-Wan Kenobi, you know, send me, you know. Oh yeah. Send me after the Emperor. I, I can't kill Anakin. Right. It's still that guy. Exactly. Even after. I will say. I will say, I think referencing back to that Joby Harrell article you talked about, we're seeing so many of these pieces fall into place. It's it's that I'm starting to feel far more confident now about, you know, and I know all the people that work at Lucasfilm, they, they really pay attention to all this stuff, but it's, it's like, it's like, it's all coming together now and it's, it's making me feel better. <laughs> you yeah. Know what I mean, I'm it's coming together in a great way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Cause you know, I, I, so like I, I, was thinking about that, you know, you know, do you want Anakin dead? You know, like, yeah. And I like, think about it. Like he said, I can't kill Anakin. Right. Well, when you look back on it, he thought Anakin died. Right. But he didn't think he killed Anakin. Right. He defeated Anakin. And then the fires of Mustafar killed him. Right. Like that was just a, a, a fringe benefit. Right. Like, well, yeah, I mean, he couldn't bring himself to do to to make the final blow, I guess. And you know, thinking back on it, you know, that might have been more merciful, you know. But uh and and god even from what episode 3, you know, you should have killed me when you had the chance, you know. This is this is I think what we're seeing here towards the end of this episode is is an Obi Wan realizing I've got more to do here because I didn't finish the job back when I should have, you know. Right. I, I don't know. And so, oh, so back on Riva, right? So, what do you make of her finding this communicator of Obi Wan's with the Bail Organa message? Okay, so I want to get to that, but before that, okay, okay, like I want to talk about her duel with Vader. Okay, yep. Because once again, we we talk about Disney's handling of Vader, right? And this duel, like she sneaks up, she goes to make a move, and just is stopped in her tracks. Yeah, yeah, he's countering every move she's going to make and he hasn't even pulled a lightsaber yeah it was <laughs> i'm watching this and i'm like he's just like stepping aside and like 
Ugh. Yep. Waving a hand, and she's just meeting this invisible barrier. Right. And I can't help but notice the irony here that he's kind of pulling the the Obi Wan moves in those training sequences that we see. Right. Yes. But he's doing it. It's the Obi Wan type moves, but he's doing it in an arrogant manner. Yes. Right. So at the same time, you think if he's facing Obi Wan here, does it go the same way? Obi Wan at full strength, for example. Does it go the same way? I don't think so. Right. But dealing with someone who is like him, because Reva's very much like Anakin. Right. It's attack. So, so what you're saying is, even as Vader, he's still using what Obi Wan taught him. Yes, and it's and it's working to his advantage. It's, it but is, it's ironic, yes, right? Because yes. he's using his faults, right, being taught to him by Obi Wan, to defeat someone using the same methods. Exactly. It's anger. It's passion. It's all attack. Right. And he's effective against it because, well, it's him. And, you know, Obi-Wan is beating up on him this way. Like, this is how you defeat this. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it, it, it's it's an ironic moment. And I thought that was great that they worked that that way. And then at the same time, once again, just showing absolute power out of Vader. Like, yeah. But you you put the arrogance in there because okay power he stops this twirling inquisitor blade with the force yes (laughs) yes and then draws it from her yeah separates it yep closes the blade on one of them and tosses it down like let's keep going right yeah yeah do you really think you got a shot let's go now yeah like I'm watching all this happen, I go, "What am I watching? This right. is whoa!" <laughs> right. And uh, we finally got to see the moment where uh, Moses Ingram was talking about like working with these guys is like ridiculous. Oh yeah, you know I had to work my butt off, and and she did. She wow. Yes, she did a fantastic job in this lightsaber sequence. Yeah, totally. I mean, while I was a little bit slow to her character. Uh, I'm really digging her character. I think, I think there was a point in this episode where I was thinking this series should be called the third sister series, not Obi-Wan Kenobi because we were seeing so much growth and, and then more insight into her background and, and, you know, all of that, it was, you know, I would say it's every bit as much to do with the character of the third sister as it is Obi-Wan Kenobi. And we were learning as much about her as we are about him, really. And and it's, it works. I mean, I would disagree with that assessment that like it would, it should be called this series. I didn't say it should be, but there was a point where I thought, I think you did thought that, but no, we can roll it back. There was a point where I thought that, not okay. that, you know, there was a point. Yeah. Just saying. I don't know. I'm using semantics. <laughs> but Just trying to inject a little, little arguing. <laughs> yeah. I, We're getting along too much on this episode, Doug. I guess. I don't know. Um, it's hard not to like this episode. It's, you know, it really is. So it's hard not to like, like as this episode, like this episode happened, it's hard not to like this series as a whole. Exactly. It's making a whole lot of what came before. Uh, I, I don't want to say make more sense, but it's, it's, I, I don't know, make more sense, you know? Right. I mean, you know, we had our crisis criticisms. Yes. Along the way. And I think at the time those were fair. Sure. I felt like we were being fair. We were, yeah, we had our criticisms and we bagged on it a little bit, but we were being fair at the time. Right. Now they slapped us with the glove back 
It said touche. <laughs> yes. And we're losing now. Yeah. Like, <laughs> How do you like me now? Yeah, exactly. I mean, but like I say, we're losing now, but we're winning now because we're getting a treat. Absolutely. And if they keep this momentum into the finale, which I got to say, they really are setting the bar high for themselves. I think so too, but I, I got a feeling they're going to deliver. I mean, I, I mean, at this point, I, I'd be surprised if they didn't. Right. Um, they, they really are fleshing every single thing out. And we talked about in the beginning, you know, um, Joby Harold saying everything's going to make sense in the end. Right. I believe him now. Yeah. If he would have said this three episodes ago, I'd have been like, yeah, sure, dude. <laughs> exactly. Like it, your, your pace right now is. Eh. Yeah, exactly. It's what it felt like. But it picked up around the end of episode three, even though episode three, was, I think that was the one where I was like, eh. or was it two? Uh, I'm not when sure did you drag him through the fire? That was three, I believe. Okay. So three was where I was like, <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then four was like, Dum, and then five's like, Dum. yep. <laughs> So they're, they're doing well. Yeah, they're definitely doing well. All right. So. Yep. Last what, thing here. What do you make of uh, the communicator in Riva? I like this. Okay. Because we talked about like, why would Obi-Wan go stomping around the galaxy? Because all he's going to do is bring attention to himself, put Luke in jeopardy. And here we are. Right. Luke's in jeopardy. Right. And, you know, Obi-Wan used his negotiator tactics, and, and he left her out to dry again in her mind. You know, she says, where were you when this happened? Oh, yes, yes. And yes. then he says, oh, we can take him together, and then she has to go do it by herself, and, you know, now she's lost everything, and he just, you know, cruised off in a ship. Right. So she's going to be angry at him. True. And he's going to seem like the, like not him, but something close to him is going to seem like an easier target. So I feel like Luke is in jeopardy right now. She knows Owen's name. Exactly. She's had that interaction with him. She already threatened she, his family. She threatened his family. And now it's like, that name comes up. She's like, I had this guy at the end of my blade. Exactly. So yeah, Luke's in jeopardy now. And we're going to see some kind of confrontation between Reva and Obi-Wan in the final episode. Right. Yet here we have Obi-Wan and Leia on a ship with failing hyperdrive being chased down by the Imperials mm -hmm. and Vader. I mean, we have a lot of loose ends to tie up here. Yeah. This <laughs> I mean, next episode is going to be lit. I know. <laughs> uh, they don't have time to breathe next week. I know. Uh, one, one, last, one last question I've got. Uh, okay. The lightsabers Obi-Wan sees, uh, when, you know, when they're getting ready to, like, you know, trying to get ready to take off and, you know, get everyone out. What do you make of those? Do you think these are these are Jedi who decided, okay, I'm just going to go live as a normal person now? Yep. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. Yeah. Yep. That's exactly what that was. That's why there's there's a box of lightsabers, and right next to it's a box of Jedi robes, robes. and there's a bunch of graffiti on the wall. Yep. Yeah. You know so what? this this path this is this is a way for people to get like off the grid. This is. Yeah. Yeah. This is who you go to to disappear. I like it. I like it. It's it's kind of, you know, it's not the early days of the rebellion or anything like that. It's just there's a a small contingency of people that are seen already at this point. Yeah, we got to do something just to like, we're not going to fight back. We're just going to go try and live our life. And then at the same time, there's a group of people that just want to save people's lives. Yeah, exactly. You know, it, yep. 
We're not going to. It's not for. It's not for building a rebellion. Right. It's just saving life. Yep. And I, I appreciate that. Like, exactly. That's going to happen. Sometimes you don't have to fight the whole system, right? You just got to go live your life your way on your own terms. Yeah. That's and it also shows how the empire would push people towards rebellion. Yes. Because this is just a humanitarian effort right here. This is just trying to save lives. Exactly. You know, people being oppressed by a strong arming regime. This even okay, man, you just made me think of something. <laughs> this this right here could be the spark for Leia in in, and in some of the the uh newer canon books, you know, Leia uh she does this type of work, right? And and Vader even talks about it in episode four. You weren't on any mercy mission this time, right? Right. This could spark that in Leia moving forward in the future. You know, she she helps people and and it's under the guise of like, you know, just helping the the, the less fortunate, but she's actually helping people get out from under the thumb of the empire it's i mean she was even doing that in rebels right like absolutely yes with the ships and all that yes yep so that was teenage leia yes exactly which still we we didn't even mention this this episode little leia still killing it absolutely totally i mean (laughs) wow (laughs) Give me a letter. I don't know how they do this. <laughs> I know. Because when they nail it, 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 I just, I don't know how they do it. How do you find someone so perfect like that? Like, exactly. She's fabulous. You do not watch this little girl do these episodes and go, yeah, I don't see it. No, you see it. Exactly. You're like, holy crap, that's Leia. I can't. I would love to see an interview with her talking about what she did to prepare for this because, you know, you, you know I want to hear that she went back and watched the original trilogy and all that kind of stuff, but it's like... I, I doubt it. I think that's I, just this little girl, dude. It could be. It could be. <laughs> you never know. And and if, if that's the case... I think uh, they casting? found a real-life Leia. <laughs> Carrie Fisher. Yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> well, i mean I, I hope she makes better decisions but yes yes let's hope yes but at the same time like like i think they just found the strongest girl they could find and this is what we got yeah the most presence they could find because man she's got a lot of presence absolutely like even even that moment where she's like a restraining bolt, yeah, picks it off and <laughs> that's better and throws it aside. I'm like, <laughs> I <know>. holy crap! <laughs> yeah, like this kid's good, right? So I see a bright, bright future. Yeah, totally. For her. I mean, you look at her resume already. It's like, damn. Uh huh. I mean, I get it because damn <laughs> you're you're awesome so yeah fabulous fabulous not for one second and and for her it's from the first second right it's like yeah yeah that, it's leia totally and you know you can complain about the crappy chase scene all you want she was fine. Yep. They just executed the chase scene poorly. I mean, that's, <laughs> and after seeing Vader tear a ship apart, the budget probably wasn't there for the chase. Scene. Exactly. Exactly. That's <laughs> some of the good that we've seen in this series has far outweighed the negatives. That's for sure. Yeah. It's like, Oh, that chase scene sucked. Like Vader tore apart a ship yes. with his bare freaking hands. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. And then he proceeded to spend half of a lightsaber duel without a lightsaber. Right. So, yeah. Money well spent. Yes. Totally. I can take the crappy chase scene if, if we're going to see Vader pull down a freaking ship. Exactly. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> literally, on my feet. Heck yeah. I can't wait to see how it concludes. Oof. Oh, I'm with you. I'm with you. And with that, if you have anything to add, you can always email us, show at the wordsamore.com. That's the best way to get a hold of us. We're also on social media at the words more on Twitter, Facebook.com slash the words more, at the words more on Instagram. You can find all that and all the ways to find the show over at the words Any final thoughts this week, Doug? No, I think we about covered it. All right. We will talk in two weeks. <laughs>